Hello and welcome to UK Migration with Barrister Shazia Anjum. In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete a UK spouse visa application online. You will learn from this video how to complete your online application. And also I'm going to tell you in my rest of the videos because I'm just going to create six videos all together and then you will be learning how much is the fee for this uh, application what's the process what happens um, after uh, submitting the application and also what documents you need to take to the visa application center and if you can't make an appointment what's uh, the alternative way to book an appointment at visa center i'm also going to show you in my videos list of the documents that you will need um, with your application form after completing this application form and uh, you will also learn a um, couple of more things in terms of the other processes such as how to complete uh, your uh, financial requirement form uh, because uh, this is not straightforward application you need to make sure you have every documents together in one place so that you can get successful result uh, from entry clearance officer many people get refusal because either they do not enclose uh, the required evidence or they miss out the legal points uh, what are mentioned actually in immigration rules there are not only immigration rules but also you will also need appendix uh, specified evidence uh, immigration rules also um, WEF 4 form uh, that you, need, uh, you will need to complete along with your application. So I'm going to tell you how much will be the fee and how long you will have to wait before you can get your result. And in terms of the other processes, you will watch my other videos. Uh, in the meantime, you can, uh, if you are not clear uh, from anything, you can also ask me any question because I'm going to hold uh, um, live classes uh, every two weeks time so that uh, um, any question in terms of uh, completing your application form, you can ask me from there and also you can get support uh, from me. But for this, you will have to um, actually click on to the link below and you need to register your details so that you can uh, come live onto my session ask as many questions as you want and also you can get your uh, successful application process uh, from me uh, in future so it's important if you haven't uh, registered your details you need to register your details so that you can get all the benefits um, from this special uh, specially created package so that you can make sure that your application is not missing out anything so before uh, we can dive into the application I'm going to tell you this is going to be the part one of the application for UK spouse visa uh, how to complete online application where to go and how you will be able to see all the evidence and I'm also going to share the drafts of the letters letter from employer letter from uh, um, third party if you cannot afford accommodation to your partner and also um, letter from any person who is uh, providing you with the maintenance um, because this is uh, going to be not only straightforward application but also there are uh, some complex matters in terms of the different circumstances people may face because many people they are wondering uh, sometimes people do not meet financial exam uh, uh, financial requirements sometimes people do not meet English language requirement and sometimes people are finding it very difficult um, in terms of different employment for example people are receiving money from self-employment people are receiving money from uh, employment resources uh, sometimes people are receiving money from multiple uh, multiple employers people are receiving money from overseas employment so all these things make it complicated and then you will have to consider you will have to watch actually all the videos if you really want to master um, this uh, spouse visa application and you want to get a good result and you want to make sure no piece is missing you need to watch all the videos need to register your details and get all the benefits from it you need you will be member of my immigrant group you will be receiving my um, live calls, uh, live sessions 
and also you will uh, be receiving email support once you register by clicking below the link and also you will be able to watch all of my videos so, so let's get into the details how to complete online application for your UK spouse visa so first of all I'm going to take you to another page where I'm going to show you how to do it first of all you will need to go on to um, www.gov.uk forward slash uk family visa partner and spouse like you are just looking at here once um, you go into uh, that link then this page will come up what you need to do you need to have a look in which category you are um, applying so first of all if we go above you will see all the categories are listed in here but we will need to apply as a partner or as a spouse when we go down on this page you will see uh, here you must apply online from outside the UK you are going to click on to this link so once um, you've clicked on to this link then you will see two options here one option is appendix FM partner we're gonna need to click on to this one if you want to apply for your spouse visa click next and then enter the country in which you are making this application so whichever country your spouse is living he or she is going to be the main applicant but if you are completing this application as a spouse of that person or if you are completing this application as being applicant from outside the country you need to make sure all the details in this form are being asked on behalf of the applicant so on behalf of the applicant let's suppose i'm just going to mention in here let's suppose the applicant is from uh, pakistan so we are going to mention here pakistan and then this will take you to the next page so next page um, you will see check available biometric enrollment location so you will see two links up here the first one is I have checked available biometric enrollment location click on to that go to next and now they're asking about your um, eligibility biometric information you need to read this carefully and then click on to apply now start new application and here you will be giving um, your email address I'm going to give mine in here so then you need to create password um, once you've created password this will ask you to confirm that next page save and continue here it's asking who does this email address belong to you or someone else um, if this is the applicant it's going to be you if it's sponsor it's going to be someone else do you have uh, an email address if you want to provide another email address put yes otherwise no so here um, they are asking about any telephone number for example you need to mention here um, the contact number where they can contact you where do you use this uh, telephone number outside the UK or inside the UK so you need to mention one of them um, and then mobile number save and continue so next page um, you will be now looking uh, any other telephone numbers do you if you have any other contact number provide them if no then save and continue they are asking are you able to be contacted by telephone I can be contacted by telephone and text messages click on to yes save and continue here they are asking uh, the applicant's name you need to mention your first name given name is first name whatever is mentioned on to the applicant's ID or passport um, copy so family name surname you are going to mention surname 
and click and save. So this is the general video for everybody. Everybody needs to mention their own particular specific details so that they can give them accurate details. In addition to name already provided, have you been known by any other name? If yes, then put yes. For example, some people, they have a different name prior to the marriage and then they change after marriage. But if this is not the case, then put now, save and continue. What's your gender? Um, applicant, if applicant is female, you need to mention and what's your relationship status. Click one of them. If you have been divorced before, you need to mention divorced. If not, then um, your relationship status at this moment is married because you are applying as a spouse visa. Okay, just give me a moment okay so here save and continue so this uh, address is going to be the applicant's address um, if applicant is living in any other country so it's going to be home country address whatever is mentioned on their id card you need to mention in here and then country is this also your correspondence address if this is your correspondence address then mention yes save and continue okay so country name we are going to mention Pakistan again okay now on next page they are asking how long have you lived at this address if you've uh, only moved uh, before, uh, I mean, after marriage, mention how many months, how many years, how many days since you've been married and uh, arrived at um, your current home, you need to mention your years. What's the ownership status of your home? If you are renting it, you need to mention accordingly but if you are living uh, with if you are living with your relative you need to mention other and then give more details so if this is a family house or this is this house belongs to your spouse you need to mention accordingly okay um so here is the next page you will see uh, you need to mention applicants passport details and who issued the passport if it's Pakistan authorities then you need to mention Pakistan whatever your country you need to mention that so if you're not sure um, about anything always by all means uh, you will have uh, um, my email address for support uh, for people who will register uh, for uh, this uh, special class so they will receive uh, all the support that they need for this application and then issue date you need to mention in here what's the date of issue um, whatever is mentioned on your passport you need to mention that uh, make sure you do not mention the same numbering what I'm just mentioning because this is uh, just to show you uh, how to complete the application you need to mention whatever is mentioned on your documents on your ID cards and passport details so expiry date is going to be this one okay not 200 <laughs> is 2020 okay it's so not 2020 sometime is 27 next is going to be ID card details um, guys if you have ID card then you need to mention ID card details uh, what's your um, ID card number you will be mentioning in here and issuing authority uh, who issued your ID card so you are going to mention in there so next page is going to be country of nationality um, and country of birth where the applicant was born and place of birth um, whatever is mentioned on applicants passport uh, copy here is going to be a date of birth 
or for the applicant so here um, you have mentioned date of birth and click continue so have you ever held any other nationality if you've held any other nationality you need to tell them what nationality did you hold but if you haven't held any other nationality then say now when do you plan to arrive in the UK uh, usually I put three months after completing the application or maybe two months after completing application if uh, this is August month you can mention September October date after two months so next one uh, what language do you speak fluently and then save go to next page what languages can you what which language would you prefer to use so if you can your uh, the applicant can talk English then you can mention English otherwise say other language whatever is convenient to yourself so next thing is going to be are you exempt from English language requirements so this is quite interesting because some people if they have uh, any disability for example physical disability mental condition and any exceptional circumstances like in during to the COVID-19 people uh, this uh, centers English language centers were closed and people actually couldn't uh, get it passed so th in these circumstances these are called exceptional circumstances then you can uh, ask for exemption which is something exemption mean exceptional circumstances mean when something is not in your control and you cannot meet um, the requirement because this is beyond to your control so one of the things could be if you can get any letter um, from psychiatrist or doctor proving your disability if this is your mental condition so psychiatrist letter can be sufficient and any uh, mental health problem uh, you can get letter from physician or any other evidence for example if this uh, was happened due to COVID-19 issue you can also get the letter um, confirming that from any institutions and enclose that so if you're not asking ex exemption then say no do you have a degree that was taught in English so if you've uh, studied in English uh, equivalent to, to uh, UK level then uh, you can say yes otherwise now save and next have you passed approved English language test so approved English language test uh, will be uh, CEFR CEFR A1 level so when you book your test make sure you book your test for uh, it's called uh, uh, life skills okay make sure you do not uh, um, book for academic general or these kind of things then your application will be refused your um, English language will not be accepted so what is accepted people ask what is accepted it's a uh, um, life skill or skill uh, language when you book your test and this is called the SAFR level A1 it's a1 for the entry application but for extension it's a2 here have you passed English language yes here you go they are asking for a1 or higher yes okay now they are asking how did you get your result certificate or online reference number if you do not have certificate mention online reference number and then they will ask your awarding body your reference number for that but if you have certificate save and continue does anyone rely on you uh, for financial support so some people actually have responsibility for their children from this marriage or from previous marriage if uh, they are divorced so if applicant has any previous children you need to mention in here but if they don't have any previous children um, click now save and continue 
Give details about two of your parents. So applicants' parents' details are required here. Uh, mother's details, given name, surname, and their date of birth. Okay. Country of nationality where they were born, some grandparents, um, actually their parents, some um, parents may be born in another country. I'm going to put India in here. Um, have they always had the same nationality? Uh, you need to mention if they have any other nationality. If they don't have any other nationality, then put now. Okay, so their country of nationality where you were born. So you need to mention uh, country of nationality uh, where they were born. Seven next second parent father because you've completed your mother. So it's father's details are going to be there. Um, given name and family name and their date of birth so once you've done it their country of nationality uh, here you go okay so have they always had the same nationality so say yes or no according to your situation do you know where you will be staying in the UK? So here is the question. You need to mention your um, address from your sponsor. So when you type in your postal code in the UK, you will see all the addresses, all the details in drop uh, drop down section. Um, Okay, so next we are going to mention is this the home of a family member, friend or any other person you know. So if this is your family member's home, say yes. And if uh, this is not your family member's home, your friends or family, um, but you must be aware of their name, their details, you are going to mention yes and then give their name, whoever is providing the accommodation. If this uh, accommodation is being provided by your sponsor or husband, then you are going to put their name, but make sure you see um, the documents. For example, you see the tenancy agreement, you see the title deed, uh, title deed means ownership of documents. So whoever owns the home, these details must be matching with that name. So if um, any family member is providing uh, uh, the accommodation, for example, the uh, home is uh, on your uncle or auntie's name or your husband's uh, uncle's or auntie's name. You must mention their name. Whoever is uh, owning uh, that home, you need to mention in here and their relationship, uh, their relationship to yourself. So if uh, it's uh, uh, your husband, you need to mention um, spouse or husband, whatever. Here you will be mentioning contact number for them and save and continue to the next page. Um, okay, I'm sure you haven't um, been tired yet because uh, more details need to be mentioned there. So this is only going to be the first video and in the second video I'm also going to show, show you uh, some of the maintenance uh, form and uh, sponsorship form mm, uh, and they are actually there are requirements to complete those documents and it's very important important you do not miss any of the details will you be uh, living anywhere else in the uk usually i put no because if you are coming to join your spouse so mostly it's your intention to live with your spouse have you been in the uk in the past 10 years so it depends if you've been to UK then put yes if you haven't been to the UK put now have you been issued with a UK visa in the past 10 years uh, if you have been issued vi with a UK visa then put yes otherwise say no and then how many times have you visited 
uh, the following places. So they are asking if you've been to Australia, Canada, New Zealand, USA, Switzerland, EEA. Just to say if you haven't been there, put zero, save and continue. Have you been to any other country um, which have not been mentioned before? For example, USA, Canada, U UK, Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland, EEA. If you've been to any of these countries, put, ye uh, put yes, otherwise no. So they're asking if you've been refused, removed, deported, um, required to leave, excluded previously. If no, say no and go ahead. Have you ever been entered uh, the UK illegally or any deportation, any bad character history? Now and save and continue. Now they're asking if you have been warned, if you have been uh, if you've received any caution, criminal conviction, any civil penalty, uh, civil, civil penalty means when um, you employ somebody who has not got any right to work, um, but then you've been fined by the authorities. So this is called civil penalty. This is for applicant, not for the spouse. Uh, do not be confused because uh, if spouse is completing this application, they are asking for the applicant now save and continue any crime against against humanity if you've been involved in those kind of um, activities then you're gonna put yes obviously then your application is going to be refused as well most probably um, if you haven't been involved in any other crime say now I have read all the information about war crimes including the guidance save and continue you must read all the information on this page before answering. Have you ever been involved in ad any other terrorist activity? No. 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 I have read all the information. Save and continue. Next page. Have you ever been member of any extremist organization? If you have not been involved in such activities, say now and save and continue. Part of our employment, have you ever been dangerous to national security? Now, if you've uh, been involved, if you think you are not of good character person now and any character behavior now, but if you have been involved in any types of these behaviors, you will need to put yes, otherwise save and continue by clicking on now. Now they are asking if you have been involved in any of uh, armed forces, intelligence services, media organization. If not, then you need to say, click, you need to click in the end. I have not worked in any of the jobs listed above. Again, they are asking for the applicants. They are not asking for the sp sponsor or spouse. So now here is the thing. Now they are asking for your current partner your spouse so his name you're going to mention and surname mean whatever is mentioned on his id so country of nationality um british uh, if he's british citizen mention in here do they currently live with you no obviously their address in the uk okay and country is going to be the united kingdom here you will find united kingdom of great britain and north ireland will they be traveling with you if they are traveling yes otherwise put now and go on to the next page why do you not live with your partner because <laughs> i can't live because he is, he is in um, England or in the United Kingdom have you ever lived with your partner within or outside the UK if you've uh, been living together after getting married say yes and put your details when and where so you need to mention in here so next page other marriages civil partnerships so these are for those people who have uh, been previously married and divorced um, 
you need to put your details in here but if this is not applicable you can say are you currently married with another person uh, if yes say yes if no say yeah, say no have you previously been married now if you have previously been married and divorced say yes otherwise put now so now here they are asking your sponsor should be your partner who has British citizenship or settled or who has refugee status or humanitarian protection in the UK so this is very important actually to learn so this application form is not only for those people who are British citizen and settled in the UK but this application form is also for those people who have been granted uh, refugee status humanitarian protection in the UK sometime uh, people's asylum claims are refused and they are given humanitarian protection so if they want to call over their spouse they need to um, fill uh, the same application form so now they are asking if so just make sure because uh, I've just noticed that there is a priority and super priority services available as well in some location because some people they really want to deal with their application on urgent basis in this situation on um, some people can get their decisions within three working days or within a week if there are uh, no uh, complex issues in the application so then they will have to pay extra money um, to get their uh, priority application uh, so for example in some applications they charge 500 pound and in some application they charge 800 pound extra and they give you your decision quickly quicker than the normal application process so your sponsor should be your partner so sponsor yes and save and continue what is the relationship to um, ASA CCC so here you need to say um, who are your sponsor actually husband wife civil partner so if the applicant is wife then your sponsor is going to be husband next they are asking about sponsor now um, I've just noticed, noticed the application actually form has been little bit changed um, than before now they are asking uh, have any home office reference number for example people um, who have been granted with settlement or who have been granted with humanitarian protection they might have got their um, home office reference number and you need to mention in here but if some people they are British British they don't um, have their reference number say no save and continue now they are asking national insurance number for your spouse you will see the question on top of uh, this application guys do not get tired uh, um, at this uh, stage because uh, once you are not active on your application then your application will be logged out and then you will have to log back in so make sure when you get all the documents in front of you in terms of uh, completing your application so for example you have your parents details so these are very important these details I should have told you in the beginning of the video but make sure this is very important before you start completing your application you will need the following documents in hand <laughs> so first one is going to be your uh, passport copy for your uh, passport copy for uh, spouse passport copy for applicant and in previous passport copies and parents details for the applicant also you will need to have uh, um, national insurance number for the sponsor who is a British citizen or settled in the UK um, home address correspondence address of the UK home address uh, from the applicants country and also you will need to have uh, national ID cards for both if you can have um, you need to have a marriage certificate um, and if there is any birth certificate required you need to have all the proof of relationship documents in hand before you can start completing your application so save and continue to the next 
uh, so they are asking a valid national insurance number so <coughs> okay <coughs> so save and continue now they are asking email address for your sponsor so here you are going to mention their <laughs> contact number sometime previous application people actually did not ask for too much details so next page does sponsor have valid passport here is sponsors details yes passport number and issuing authority if that's been issue issued uh, by british authorities then you are going to mention issue date and also make sure you provide your sponsors photocopy this gives you some um, actually credibility when you enclose your uh, sponsors passport copy so here is date of issuing of your passport and this is going to be date of expiry to your passport um, for sponsor okay so next thing is have you met um, sponsor yes when did you meet um, tell them month and year and when did you get married they are asking when did your relationship begin uh, date of marriage usually people meet on date of marriage but if you your relationship began whenever your relationship began if you've been married or if you've been in a relationship you need to mention in here okay how often do you usually see them sometimes people get married and sponsor come to the uk afterwards so they go and see each other every couple of months time so you need to tell them every um three months or every four months six months whenever they come to visit you so last time when did you see your sponsor you need to mention according to your circumstances so here is the next page they're asking what languages do they speak english okay what languages uh, do you and your sponsor use to communicate with each other so if uh, you talk to each other in english say in english and now they're asking your date of marriage so make sure you are not confused between date of mar marriage and date of relationship some in some countries people can have a relationship uh, before date of marriage so they can mention two different dates but in some countries uh, people um, can only people only start their relationship uh, when they get married so it can be the same dates e uh, the same dates uh, date of relationship and date of marriage can be the same so here they are asking where did you marry tell them <laughs> country tell them uh -uh. okay what type of ceremony um, was it like your cultural marriage cultural marriage um, or religious marriage uh, what kind of marriage was that um, so did both of you attended this marriage yes or no uh, up to you because uh, I don't know your circumstances yet so I'm just uh, giving you an idea how to complete it so if uh, you both have attended say yes and if you both not have attended say no they are not going to give you yeah they are not going to consider your application if you say now was this arranged marriage or not yes if it is yes where you related to were you related to a sponsor before you became partner if you uh, were related for example if you've been cousin then say yes if you not have been cousin or relative say no 
if sponsor has previously been married then say yes if not then say no does sponsor have any children from any previous marriage or any financial responsibility for if your sponsor um, this is for sponsor so if husband or your sponsor have any children say yes if no then say no so do you both have uh, shared financial responsibilities so if you share responsibilities then say yes but usually if people are living if pe people are newly married and they are not living together so how come they can then they will say now save and continue so where do you intend to live in the UK so if this is your sponsor home you've already mentioned the address you go you are going to say yes but if this is not your husband's home and this home belongs to any other person for example any aunt, auntie uncle then you need to mention other and say their address but usually it's from sponsor save and continue so does sponsor own this property if they are uh, they have title deed they own this property they have mortgage statement say yes if they are renting this property say no so they are asking they rent it privately they rent it from local uh, local authority or they rent it um, from anywhere uh, anywhere else so if they are renting privately say yes how many bedrooms are there tell them bedrooms how many other rooms are there apart from bedroom if there is any other room you need to mention you need to tell them does anyone else other than sponsor or their dependents live at this property if there are living other people you need to give them their details you need to say them yes if not then say no so finally here is your completed application well done you've completed your application now and uh, this is the final check so here is it you can just check your details and what I do sometimes I just save it by clicking right click and uh, when you click on to the option print this will give you here save as PDF so once you save it this will give you option where you want to save it so usually I save my initial draft before submitting the application or if you actually want me to check it before submitting it you can save initial draft uh, right here before submitting your application in pdf and then share it with me or email me i will go through it and then i will give you further feedback if anything needs to be amended uh, but if you are happy with the, this uh, uh, contents you've uh, mentioned you put then you can just go ahead and submit your application okay so once you've said saved <laughs> this application then you will go to the bottom of the page and here you continue so here here you go so second part now they are asking specified benefits uh, make sure there are a um, couple of types of income as I said in the beginning of uh, my uh, this uh, video I've mentioned there are multiple sources of income some people are self-employed some people are in employment some people are with a different employer and some people actually uh, they receive carer allowances they receive disability living allowances they receive a severe disability dis, dis, <laughs> disablement allowances they receive industrial uh, injuries disablement allowances some people receive attendance allowance personal independence payment armed forces independent payment guaranteed income payment under the armed forces compensation scheme constant attendance allowance mobility sup supplement war disablement pension police injury pension and in the end no my partner doesn't receive any of these benefit so again they are asking this question to applicant does sponsor receive any of these benefit so they are asking if 
your sponsor who is living in the UK, the, if they receive any of these benefits, make sure you discuss with your sponsor and make sure you discuss with your lawyer uh, before clicking one of these, um, which one will uh, be applicable onto your case. But if your sponsor knows, if uh, he or she is receiving any of these benefits, you need to click on to uh, the um, section, relevant section, uh, because then this application is going to be his. This is very important because this application uh, then will need different rules, different requirements, different financial requirements um, under this, this route because some people they may be exempted uh, from financial requirement if they are receiving carer allowances so that's why um, you need to discuss with your sponsor and whatever is applicable click on to that if you are not receiving any of the allowances and this is straightforward application uh, you need to say <laughs> in the end no my partner doesn't receive any of these benefits save and continue so are you ready for the next section if you are ready we will go ahead and then we'll mention additional sponsored children so these are the sp additional sponsored children um, I'm just thinking um, if you need to ask any question so that I can answer without <laughs> your question um, I'm just thinking if any of the complications in the previous page so give me a ring if you want to ask uh, any question in terms of uh, your benefits or career allowance or what documents will be required whether or not you are financially exempted whether or not you are exempted from your English language because every um, situation is different but th if this is straightforward application you will go ahead and now you will be telling them um, if your sponsor have any additional children if they have adopted any other children if they have any step children dependents applying on this application um, okay all children whether or not they are British whether or not they are uh, under 18 uh, whether or not uh, um, I mean they are living uh, uh, or they are residing uh, in the United Kingdom under EU law so all children you need to mention in here if you have any children say yes you need to mention how many children but you, if you don't have any children say now save and continue to be honest guys I haven't thought it was going to be too long because when I do work myself it's easier to do it because then I don't have to explain I don't have to talk I just only have to focus on to my application and work on to the application but now I'm just thinking about yourself if you have much energy left then we will go ahead okay let's go ahead you are brave you are hardworking <laughs> so let's go ahead you must be able to show that financial requirement for this route is met your financial annual uh, your annual financial requirement is 18,600 pound so this is for sponsor or spouse because this is the basic requirement you need to show to them uh, in terms of meeting your financial requirement 18,600 pound and this will be gross income without uh, before taking uh, deducting tax from the salary will you be able to prove that the financial requirement is met here now they are referring to appendix fm 1.7 what does that mean appendix fm 1.7 means you will see all the um, financial if you need any pdf you can download it from here uh, but in nutshell um, it means what types of income can be used to satisfy the requirement because if uh, you are receiving any benefits then there will be different types of evidence different types of documents you need to mention but if uh, uh, you are meeting uh, your financial requirement through salary slip employment self-employment then there will be different documents enclosed with your application so basically 18,600 pound income requirement will you be able to prove uh, that the financial requirement is met now 
Now they are asking uh, go through appendix FM 1.7 and see what documents will be required for your application. So if you need my advice on that, uh, schedule a call with me um, or wait for the two weeks to join me on my live class or you can uh, schedule or book uh, a call specific uh, confidential call with you and discuss with me and I will go through with all the requirements with you. So if you are meeting the requ requirement say yes save and continue. Which type of income will you rely on to meet your financial requirement? So here is whether it's employment, self-employment, non-employment income. So non-employment mean when you actually rent out your property, you receive rental income. Uh, if you receive, you are, you have been receiving your pension or any cash saving, whatever is applicable, mention, tick on to that and go on to the next page. So what's their current job title so you need to say what does he do or what does she do what type of employment is it Temp temporary or permanent when did they start their employment oh <laughs> i wasn't aware that uh, i was actually i have been very good teacher when i was quite younger anyway have you been employed by the same employer for the last six months time say yes what do they earn your sponsor same amount continuously same amount continuously not the same amount continuously not the same amount continuously below the financial requirement okay so if same amount every month you are receiving the uh, same pay slip salary slip you're gonna need to tick on to this one and say what where what is their annual income before tax for this employment so before tax as I mentioned uh, if it's uh, over 18,600 mention that but if it's not over 18,600 minimum it must be 18,600 if you are not receiving any allowances so here you are going to mention your employer's details and their country is going to be United Kingdom. Okie dokie. So uh -uh, where does it go? United Kingdom and Northern Ireland here. Okay. And their contact number you will be mentioning here their company email address <laughs> okay so next page do you want to add additional employment income for example if uh, uh, you are also self-employed uh, as well as employed then you're gonna need say yes if not then say no and save and continue do you want to add previous job from within the last 12 months time so here is a crucial part people who have been in employment with different employers for example uh, you've been working uh, um, with one employer for three months and you've changed your employer you've gone to the next employer um, and you've changed your employer you've gone to the third employer so this is where they need to mention and here is the trick and most important thing you need to make sure you enclose your 12 months salary slip if you have changed your employment if you have not changed your employment then the requirement is for six months time so I'm being very transparent with you I'm telling you everything so that you don't get your refusal you get your application rate higher than usual um to be successful actually to be honest um so if you've changed your employment in the last 12 months time you need to uh, enclose your 12 month salary slip but if you have been with the same employer then you need to mention no and move away move to the next page <laughs> so here is any further details if you want to give any details uh, in terms of your employment 
and check your answer if you're happy with the answers then move forward continue so here you are looking at mandatory documents some of the documents are mentioned here but I mean every person has different circumstances if uh, um, you want to have consultation in terms of what other documents you have. for example you have compelling and compassionate circumstances and some of the application part have not been very straightforward so this is where you are going to need um, expert advice from any consultant lawyer and if you are my client and if you have registered um, by clicking below you have become a member of uh, my group then contact me and then I will give you further list of documents that will support your application <laughs> additionally okay so here is mandatory documents so passport of the applicant by data page make sure for British citizen sponsor other documents uh, sponsor language test certificate for to prove the level of English required uh, English language proof of relationship such as marriage certificate make sure this is very important if your marriage certificate is not in English language you must get it translated sir, from certified translator to actually enclose with your application uh, because entry clearance officer they don't like uh, um the documents in other languages because it's quite confusing for them sometimes they can't consider your details even if you are right but if it's not in english then there are pretty much chances they will get confused and you might get refusal okay so check these documents here 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 you will also need to have your tb test result okay so once uh, you may need to be tested for TB um, which is valid for six months from the date of your x-ray so yes some country may be exempted but you need to check in here um, get your TB test done um, and it must be done uh, with the home office requirement because there are some centers uh, um, who provide TB test under uh, the guidance uh, in accordance with the um, home office uh, requirement so make sure you go to those centers so conditions application if your application is successful there will be conditions on your visa uh -huh. this will include whether you are able to work in the UK for example they may put some condition they may not put some conditions so it it, it depends uh, what are your circumstances okay I confirm I understand and accept it accept take the responsibility take the responsibility <laughs> okay um, and then this is the declaration that your uh, information is not false um, if this is the applicant you need to make sure you click on to the second box and if this is not the applicant somebody else is um, completing this application on behalf of the applicant then say in the bottom of the page here okay so declaration I am the applicant aged under 18 now <laughs> who is under 18 now I'm the applicant uh, the first one okay here okay Decla you've signed declaration and now you go on to the next page here you will be paying immigration health charges um, go to IHS website so here actually you will be diverted to another website and then you will be paying your uh, um, health charges uh, let's have a look how much health charges you will have to pay 400 per year if you are uh, if your actually visa is going to be two and once your application is successful you will be receiving your visa for 30 months which means uh, you will be paying them 1000 pound for um, your entry clearance application just for health surcharges okay 
are you applying to stay in the Isle of Man? If not, then say no and continue. Here, your title. Okay. So once you've checked your details, go on to green box. These details are correct. Details. Uh -uh. How much they are asking? <coughs> so because we've mentioned that application was being submitted from Pakistan, so they've calculated in rupees. So let me tell you by converting this into pounds, if this is uh, 2,72,000 which means oh actually it seems they've calculated um, 1200 pound equivalent to 1200 pound um, yes for the they are charging you for three years equivalent to three years so approximately um, it's going to be 1200 pound so do I have calculated let me just see um, if we say it two seven two two nine two um okay i'm just going to tell you how much it's going to be okay just give me a moment i'm just going to write it down so if this is two lakh seventy two thousand two hundred ninety two rupees, yeah, convert it into pounds, and I believe it's going to be twelve hundred pound and something, and that you will be paying uh, by your credit or debit card once you've paid it. okay this will take you to the next page okay so once uh, you've paid your IHS then this will take you to um, another page uh, which is uh, where you will be paying your uh, application fee and uh, I believe application fee is going to be um, approximately uh, 1530 pound uh, for one application and uh, once you've paid that uh, then they will show you your application completed application so your completed application uh, you will see the link you need to click on to the link save your completed application um, save uh, uh, your uh, checklist of the documents and also you will see the link where you can book an appointment for your visa application center for your biometric appointment so uh, here was the actually a uh, first part of my video so this is the first part i'm going to uh, tell you uh, how to book an appointment for visa center and if you cannot secure your uh, appointment uh, for biometric what to do next uh, how uh, what are the alternative methods of booking your uh, biometric appointment in your home country um, so keep watching my uh, second video where i'm going to tell you about list of the documents that you will need um, for your application um, take those documents uh, at visa application center they will scan them for you but you will have uh, one option once you've submitted this application you will see they will give you option if you want to upload your documents by yourself uh, um, there so if this is quite important then do it otherwise I don't do it I always prefer to send my client at visa center so that um, visa center make sure it's been scanned properly um, because if there is some problem for example visa center can't um, sometime if visa center can't uh, scan them then uh, you can take the opportunity on your uh, by at the time of submitting your application okay otherwise just uh, um, take the documents uh, to visa application center they will scan it for you okay so my point was in my next video I'm going to tell you list of the documents uh, that you need for your application I'm also going to tell you what will happen after submitting your application how long will it take 
uh, and how you can book for priority a priority application so that your application is decided quickly in within days also i'm going to tell you if you do not receive your uh, response back uh, um, in eight weeks or ten weeks in usual normal application so where what will be the email address where is the correspondence address how can you follow up your application how can you uh, make sure you get your response back um, after submitting your application so next video i'm going to tell the things i've just mentioned uh, but for that you need to uh, if you want to actually see all of the videos i'm going to uh, create for you people uh, six parts because this is only one part I'm going to create second part for biometric and uh, list of documents so what's going to be happen how to follow up application how to get the CN quickly and in third video I'm going to uh, tell financial requirement form how to complete financial requirement form um, because uh, it's quite complicated so if one section is in uh, relation to employment the other one is self-employment the third one is um, about benefits so in terms of uh, uh, the actual requirement you will need to select your um, section so I'm going to explain in my third video how to complete a financial requirement form uh, from sponsor and how to declare or disclose your income in that form also I'm going to tell you how to complete uh, um, undertaking form uh, from sponsor so in my fourth video I'm going to show you I'm going to share with you uh, some of the drafts for example you will also need uh, to enclose with your application uh, some of uh, extra evidence or letters for example letters from employer letter from third party who are providing you with the maintenance if you cannot meet financial requirement for your spouse um, or any draft documents uh, uh, property uh, property report accommodation report so I'm going to share with you all the drafts and all the contents that I have created for you people in my fourth video in my fifth video I'm going to share people who who are exempted from financial requirement and uh, what are the requirement even if they are exempted from uh, meeting 18,600 pound but what are the other requirements that they must meet in terms of uh, making a successful UK spouse visa application and what will be the maintenance requirement how do you calculate that how do you um, i mean what kind of documents are accepted uh, once uh, you get exemption from financial requirement and if um, you are exempted from uh, english language so what kind of letters uh, you will need to get from uh, um, your um, one second i'm just going to write it down yes so English language exemptions I'm going to share with you what type of letters you will need to enclose uh, I'm going to share with you the drafts of the letter what types of letter you will need to get from the relevant authorities and how you can claim your fin exemption from your English language requirement and who are qualified to do that and how to do it so this is going to be my fifth video six video. six video is going to be ha huh, I'm going to share with you immigration rules because without the proper immigration rules which are compatible with your evidence and what are the exceptions to those rules if people cannot meet those immigration rules so what are the exceptions to those rules how can you actually be qualified uh, how can you be successful without meet, meeting in certain circumstances um, to immigration rules so I'm going to share uh, exceptional circumstances um exceptional circumstances i'm because i'm just writing it down as well exceptional circumstances and general immigration rules um so that these are the things you need to make sure it's put right because without these immigration rules or exception rules uh, your immigration uh, your application might fail 
um, it's very important. This is where people get refusal because uh, when they do not consider the immigration rules, they only just uh, say, oh, we have the right to get this uh, visa because we are spouse of British national uh, persons. No, 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 no. This is not right. This is completely not right. You must meet either with the uh, immigration rules or you must fall under the exceptional circumstances. So I'm going to share everything. Let me drink some cheers. So I'm going to share everything in my six video uh, who will be qualified under immigration rules, who will be qualified under exceptional circumstances, even if they can't meet immigration rules. So um, these are the six videos I'm just going to share with you um, by actually implementing the step. Uh, I have created in those six videos so you will get uh, pretty much chances uh, to have a successful result from entry clearance officer because once you make sure your evidence is credible you meet the immigration rules requirement you meet the specified evidence which evidence are applicable um, onto your circumstances whether or not you can claim exemption from uh, English language or financial requirement and if so how to claim exemption from those uh, requirement because it's not that straightforward that you just claim exemption you have the right to claim exemption now this is not right you need to make sure you take the right steps in terms of claiming the exemption from these requirements what are the exceptional circumstances in your application how you can uh, create those documents of what are needed even if uh, you are exempted from those requirements so I'm going to share all the drafts I'm going to share all the rules requirement and how to complete your certain forms um, after this application form and the steps that you need to take before getting the CN because some people they just uh, um, sit down and wait for the decision they don't don't do anything unless they get refusal so once they get refusal uh, their application fee is wasted uh, their time is wasted they don't have uh, much chances in appeals so let me just go back I'm just <laughs> mm -hmm. so here you have seen them actually um, yes so here you seen um, let me just go back for a second so you've seen some of uh, the requirement here and now um, I'm going to uh, show you the other videos that I have created and also you will see a couple of uh, the requirement in terms of uh, meeting the immigration rules in terms of uh, getting the benefit from my other videos. So if you uh, want to have the benefits from all these videos and if you want to have a live session with me uh, live questions support uh, you need to uh, you need to click onto the link that has been provided in the description box and become member then you will receive uh, all uh, the benefits uh, from my videos and then you also receive uh, help in terms of maximizing the chances of success in your spouse visa application because this is very important that you take right steps at the right time because once your application is refused, once you get your refusal and your grounds um, are not properly drafted, here is another thing actually, even if after creating uh, six videos, I'm also going to either I'm going to provide grounds, legal grounds, or I'm going to draft it for you, or I'm going to share this for you. Ground means when you just give the clear ideas to actually entry clearance officer how to um, I mean what are your legal basis of your application so you need to make sure you mention that and uh, enclose with appendix 2 uh, so that you can get uh, maximum chances of success in your application so yes you will also get the grounds and you will also get the support in terms of uh, uh, drafting it for you or you will just see I will share it with you how to draft it by yourself so again, um, this is my first part of the video. So next six parts plus grounds you will see in my next videos and you will see uh, the link in the description box so that you can click on that 
get member uh, membership and also um, get all the supports that you need in terms of your successful UK visa application steps. So I'm Barista Shazi Anjam with 15 years legal experience. I have been helping many immigrants in terms of settling in the United Kingdom. So if uh, you haven't subscribed yet my YouTube channel where you will receive so much uh, free help, uh, subscribe my YouTube channel and also um, go on to my website check out there are so many things waiting for you you can get um, in terms of your uk immigrations not only spouse visa but also in terms of a primary carer visa in terms of your children visa uh, en national extended family member appeal matters judicial review so all these things you will uh, receive many information you will receive many benefits so check out my website become a member of my facebook group and also register your details by clicking uh, the link into the description box so in the meantime uh, wish you all the best and uh, thank you so much take care of yourself and take care of uh, your family member so i will see you soon in my next video <laughs>